if you're looking at this video, you've just made the best career choice of your life. It's not only just a career, it's a journey. Transportation is the sprocket in the wheel. Every department is the spoke. And I'm gonna to explain to you each department in transport, what you can do to and what you can achieve. Not only that, but look at it as a big tree that you can go up any branch that you want. Imagine this, close your eyes. Imagine having a job where every day is different. Imagine having a job where you get fed. Imagine that you had a job, looking back now, where you worked with the same guy for 20 years, and old Chuck had bad breath, and you had to deal with him every day, every day, every day. You don't have that here. You have a journey. You're gonna be working with actors, you're gonna be working with talented people, not only in just transport, but you're gonna be working with all the other departments. And there's in transport, you start off with unimovers, then you're there's unimovers, then you can be as a co-captain, you can be a swamper, you can be a talent driver, you can be a shuttle call, you can work with all the departments, grips, electrics, props, special effects, help doing picture cars. I will explain to you what's required in each department. And you need to pay attention because this is valuable. Because this is not a career, this is a journey. And you can work at this journey to your 75 years of age. I'm going to start off with unit movers. Every person in our department, in a key position, in a boss position, all started with unit movers. I can see unit movers coming out of a van and know who's going to be the next pitch car coordinator, who's going to be the next captain, who's going to be the next co captain, who's going to be the next swamper, who's going to be a great shuttle guy, who's going to be a great talent driver. Just by the way you address and the way you apply yourself on the job. As unit movers, the first thing you need to do is when you take the call and it's the call time, they give you an address and it's 8 a.m., you need to be there an hour early. Why do I need to be there an hour early? The reason why you have to be there an hour early is because things change on a rapid base. And in the film industry, things change on an hourly base. You want to be there an hour early because there's a deal memo you have to fill out. It could be a corporate deal memo or employee deal memo. And there's things you have to bring with you. You have to bring uh, things according to the weather. You need spare gloves. If it's raining, you need to be dressed for the weather, whether it's rain, sunshine, or snow. You need to bring other things like a pen, a flashlight. If you can have an extra pair of shoes, that'd be great too, because if you're wearing the same boots for 12, 15 hours, your feet can get sore. If you can change them up, it'll make your day a lot easier. And when you do need to move, and after you show up and you fill up the mama, you have to deal with the co-captain and the swamper and the captain. The co-captain is the guy who's responsible for parking the trucks. His day, when you show up at nine o'clock at night, could already start at five o'clock in the morning. And the parking lot you're gonna go park your trucks in, that co-captain could have already looked at 11 parking lots the last four days, and he's had to put the same effort in into each parking lot, measuring things out and planning things because it doesn't, it fits like a puzzle. And although you think, well, why do I have to listen to him? Because he's going to help you out. So you report to your co-captain. You fill out all the paperwork that's required. Your co-captain will sign you a truck. If you're taking an AZ call, he'll sign you an AZ truck. If you're taking a DZ call, he'll sign you a DZ. Sometimes they're just G's. It's important that when you go on a unit move that you listen to your co-captain your co and your captain and your swamper. Your co-captain will give you the route that you have to take when you're doing a unit move. And there's a reason why we they have a route picked out. One is overhead bridges, low bridges, tight corners. They're going to try and make the route as easy as possible for you to adhere so there's not as much damage as we've had had. And as a unit mover, it's your job and it's your responsibility to look after that unit. You can't be wandering around. You can't be doing this. You can't be doing that. You got to stay close to your truck. It's important as a unit mover. Once you establish a truck, you hop in the truck. Have wet wipes with you so you can wipe the steering wheel down. Have your have your gear with you in an in event of bad weather. Bring extra precautions. If you need an extra toothbrush, bottles of water, bring that with you. Have a pen. Everyone on their iPhones now has a map and a route so you know where you're going. The co-captain will, will instruct you where you're going to go and the route you have to take. And he'll give you the order that you have to go in. And if you're number five truck leaving the parking lot, you're going to be a number five when you're coming in. And the reason for that is because they're all placed differently. Interactional, and some ones are backing in, some ones are driving in, some of the doors are facing in. There's a reason why he's telling you to park this way because he's had the map out and he's had the, the distance and the primary laid out for the parking lot. You need to listen to that. So don't jump ahead on the moves. Once you get to the next location, before you do anything, you don't level your truck out until your captain, your co-captain, or your swamper tells you that is perfect. 
Once it's leveled properly, then you get out and you open up your truck accordingly. Never, never, never assume anything. Just you have to ask and you got to speak to your captain or your co-captain or your swamper.